warm up head shoulders get your arms moving shoulders begin the legs Uh oh. Good afternoon. This is Mrs. Dana with coming live to you with some first grade reading. I'm so glad that you joined us today. A huge thank you to Miss Queen who did our lesson yesterday. Didn't she do a fantastic job? Man, I tell you what, I thought it was great. And I love her jokes. That's great. I hope that you got your body warmed up. You got that blood flowing because that blood flows straight to this brain up here, which is the greatest thing you have um, to help you get to thinking good. And um, so we're in for a really great time today. Let's go over our standards that we've been covering so far for this fourth quarter. Well, let's see. Our first standard that we've been talking about is we have been talking about words or phrases in a text that appeal to our senses. And remember, what are your senses? Can you help me? Your sense of touch. That's exactly right. How things feel. Your sense of sight. How things look. Your sense of smell. How things smell. Your sense of taste. The way things taste. And your sense of hearing. How things sound. Now I'm going to tell you something right now that's happening right outside my window. There are these beautiful birds and they're playing with each other. I can hear that beautiful song play. And um, I love that. So that appealed to my sense of hearing. I also got some beautiful flowers the other day. And that appealed to my sense of sight. And so what we're looking at when we're looking in text is we're looking at words or groups of words that appeal to all of those senses. Our next standard is talking about the difference between informational text and literature. And if you remember, informational text gives you what? information you are exactly right what a smart group out there that's right it gives you information and so an informational text will be a text that may that might have a diagram in it it might have a glossary that gives you definitions of words it might have an index so that you know where to look um, up something what page number to look at and remember that a, a magazine might be informational text Mm. Like I told you the other day, my son gets Bassmaster because he's a huge bass fisherman. He loves it. That's all he wants to do. That's all he talks about. He also likes a hunting magazine that we have. And so in those magazines, it talks about all different types of products that are used to go hunting and go fishing. It talks about where the best places to go. It will have diagrams of lakes and where they should go for different kinds of fishing and all that. That is all informational text. It gives you information about something. Literature actually tells you a story and it's in order. So there's a beginning, a middle and an end. It tells you characters. It tells you a setting and it tells you fabulous events. And then one of our standards that we talked about was talking about who is telling the story. So we're going with our second grade word, which is point of view. Who is telling the story? Is it the characters telling the story? Is it the narrator telling the story? Is it someone else in the story telling the story? And then our last standard is that we are looking at illustrations in the text and the illustrations will can the illustrations give us detail about the text so can the illustrations give us details about the um character settings or events so today i have a fabulous book i cannot wait to read it to you um and in this book let me tell you what you're going to have to do because this is going to be hard so you got to put on your thinking caps are you ready if you'll close your eyes i will pass out your listening ears and i will pass out your thinking caps are you ready close your eyes keep them closed now i see you looking you have them closed all right they've been passed out so i want you to take your hands can you feel them above your hands you see them right there oh yeah i want you to clip those ears on and they have to make the 
sound to make sure that they're in. Are they in good? Now you got to clean them out. Oh, get the cobwebs out. Oh, whew. All right. I think mine are clean out. Now get your thinking cap. Click it on. And remember, it's going to make that sound. So do that sound. All right. And you got it activated. All right. So today you're going to have to decide if the text that I am reading is informational text or literature. And you say, oh, Miss Daddle, that is easy. I know what to do. But guess what? This is going to be a little bit harder. It's going to be a challenge. But remember, we don't shy away from challenge, do we? Absolutely not. So the title of the book is Diary of a Worm. Are you ready? And it is by Doreen Cronin. Pictures by Harry Bliss. Diary of a Worm. March 20th. Mom says there are three things I should always remember. Number one, the earth gives us everything we need. Two, when we dig tunnels, we help take care of the earth. Must make tunnel. Help earth breathe. Number three, never bother daddy when he's eating the newspaper. Chomp. March 29th. Today I tried to teach Spider to dig. Look at spiders. What? First of all, he, his legs got stuck. I think I've twisted one of my ankles. Then he swallowed a bunch of dirt. <laughs> I give up. Tomorrow he's going to teach me how to walk upside down. March 30th. Worms cannot walk upside down. Can you see that? The spider had to spin its web to catch Mr. Worm. April 4. Fishing season started today. We all dug deeper. And look, there's a shovel and it says bait. And down here it's got grandpa and it says, did you guys hear something? Look where that shovel is, right above them. April 10th, it rained all night and the ground was soaked. We spent the entire day on the sidewalk. Hopscotch is a very dangerous game. Look at the worms. Woo! Gravy. April 15th. I forgot my lunch today. I got so hungry that I ate my homework. My teacher made me write, I will not eat my homework 10 times. When I was finished, I ate that too. Do you see that? April 20th. I snuck up on some kids in the park today. They didn't hear me coming. I wiggled right up between them and they screamed. <laughs> I love it when they do that. May 1st. Grandpa taught us that good manners are very important. So today I said good morning to the first Anne I saw. Good morning. There were 600 more of them in line. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How you doing? Good morning. Nice to see you. Howdy. Good morning. I stood there all day. May 8th. Had the worst nightmare last night. Giant birds playing hopscotch. Mom says I have to stop eating so much garbage right before I go to sleep. May 15th. I got into a fight with Spider today. He told me you need legs to be cool. Then he ran. I couldn't keep up. Maybe he's right. May 16th. I made Spider laugh so hard he fell out of his tree. Who needs legs? May 28th. Last night I went to the school dance. You put your head in, you put your head out, you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. And that's basically all we could do. Why? Why is that all they can do? Because guess what? They don't have legs or arms. <laughs> June 5th. Today we made macaroni necklaces in class. 
I brought mine home and we ate it for dinner. You're very talented. June 15th. My older sister thinks she's so pretty. I told her that no matter how much time she spends in the mirror, her face will always look just like her rear end. Spider thought that was really funny. Mom did not. July 4th. When I grow up, I want to be a Secret Service agent. Spider says I will have to be very careful because the president might step on, my mis uh, step on me by mistake. It's a dangerous job, I told him, but somebody's got to do it. July 28th. Three things I don't like about being a worm. Number one, I can't chew gum. Number two, I can't have a dog. Can we keep it, Mom? Number three, all that homework. And guess what his book say? His book says, says digging, soil through the ages, night creatures, and compost 101. July 29th. Three good things about being a worm. Number one, I never have to go to the dentist. No cavities, no teeth either. Number two, I never get in trouble for tracking mud through the house. And number three, I never have to take a bath. Who's my grubby little boy? August 1st. It's not always easy being a worm. We're very small and sometimes people forget that we're even here. But like mom says, the earth never forgets we're here. Uh-oh. Think it is out. Bee stung me. Isn't this leaf awesome? I found this really cool rock. Mom and Dad's anniversary. Go roast. My own comic. My sister's slumber party. Hee <laughs> hee. My favorite pile of dirt. The end. So what do you think? This diary of a worm, do we think that this is literature or do we think that this is informational text? Hmm, let's think. It did tell us information about worms, didn't it? Look right here. It told us that worms help the earth. It also says that they help the earth by digging tunnels. So that is information, isn't it? Yeah. So let's look for something else. Hmm. We know that worms don't have legs and that they can't crawl upside down. Hmm. But is there any other information that reads specifically about worms? Hmm. Not really. It takes our little friend that is the worm and it tells his, reads his diary, but can worms really talk? No, they can't. Hmm. So we know that worms can't really talk and we know that worms can't really write. So do we think that it's informational text or literature? You're right. It is literature. This story has a beginning, middle, and an end, doesn't it? It tells us things in a sequential order because it goes by dates. It's like it is a diary entry. And so we have something that goes in each day. That's exactly right. And we know that worms and spiders don't really talk. But th is it okay to pretend that? Absolutely. Does it make for great stories? Absolutely. Ask Charlotte of Charlotte's Web. It makes great stories. And so, um, do you think that worms go to school? No, they don't go to school. But is it fun to pretend that? Absolutely. So, I couldn't trick you guys. You are too funny. This is Diary of a Worm. And there's actually several other um, diaries of different animals that you can read. This author, listen to this, is the same author as Click Clack Moo. And remember, we read that the other week. So this author has done a ton of funny stories about um, animals. So I think Doreen Cronin, if you could look up some more books and read by her, I think that you would really, really enjoy. So not quite informational text, literature, but it is fun information, isn't it? That's exactly right.
So um, I hope that as you are reading uh, this week that you think about those things. I want you to think about is what you're reading informational text or is it literature? Also think about the illustrations. Do the illustrations help you to see what's going on in the book? Does it give you details about that? Mm. So those are just things to pay really close attention as you are reading. So I've got a poem for you. And this poem is going to take you with using your thinking cap because you're going to have to really imagine this in your head. And it's called Long Leg Lou and Short Leg Sue. Are you ready? And this is by Shel Silverstein. And this is on from his book of collections called Falling Up. Are you ready? Log Leg Lou and Short Leg Sue went for a walk down the avenue, laughing and joking, looking good for, like good friends do. Long Leg Lou and Short Leg Sue. Says Long Leg Lou to Short Leg Sue, can't you walk faster than you do? It really drives me out of my mind that I'm always in front and you're always behind. Says Short Leg Sue to Long Leg Lou, I walk as fast as I meant to do. Then I'll go walking with someone new, says Long Leg Lou to Short Leg Sue. Now Long Leg Lou, he walks alone, looking for someone with legs like his own. And sometimes he thinks of those warm afternoons back when he went walking with Short Leg Sue. And Short Leg Sue strolls down the street, hand in hand with slow foot feet. And they take small steps and they do just fine. And no one's in front and no one's behind the end. So just be thinking about that. Can you imagine long leg Lou and short leg Sue? In my head, I see these really, really super long legs. And then I see these really little super short legs. So just a fun poem. Remember, poems can bring out all different kinds of fun emotions. Some poems can be written to make you laugh. Some can be written to show love to other people. Some can be written to show to express sadness or excitement. So take a time and write your own poem. There's no specific thing that you have to do that can be up to you. So I'm so glad to see you guys. I can't wait to be back with you tomorrow. I think we've got a fabulous book that we're going to be reading tomorrow. And so boys and girls, you know what? If nobody's told you today, guess what? I love you so very much. I'm so glad that you're with me and I can't wait to see you tomorrow. I hope you have a great afternoon. Get outside and enjoy that beautiful sunshine. Have a great day.